Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this vlog, I would like to share my previous experience in conducting bones analysis. Well, the analysis comprises of two parts that are the macro analysis and micro analysis, where in this vlog, I would focus more on micro analysis. Well, here we go. Um, a few years ago, I was presented with a bag of bones that was discovered at a river bank at the back of a mosque. The bones emerged after a flood resided and they were collected. They were very wet, very damp, covered with mud, sands and debris. So I let them dry it for a few days while uh, carefully cleaning them to identify whether the bones belong to humans or animals. As you can see on screen, that is one of the dental samples presented to me. The tooth is larger than my thumb and the grinding surface is very coarse the regions it shows that this belongs to herbivore and these are part of the limbs where the cannon bone humerus the arm the hoof or what we call toenail and kneecap and in bovine or caprine, the goat, ovine, the sheep, they do have hoof. But as you can see just now, the tooth is large, too large for a goat or a sheep. So I would say it might be cattle or buffalo. You can appreciate the structure based on this anatomical diagram. The humerus and metacarpus or the cannon bone are located at the front limb or the front leg the patella is not shown here it's actually the kneecap and of course it's supposed to be at the knee area where i have labeled there and these are the dental exhibits or dental samples that were presented to me the maxillary molar and mandibular premolar some of you might be asking what is maxillary and what is mandible well, in the following diagram, it shows that mandible is referring to the lower jaw while maxillary is referring to the upper jaw. Okay, you can see there uh, in bovine, they don't have a frontal maxilla incisor. It, it has been replaced uh, by a dental pad and they have that diastema, a hollow space. Uh, between the incisor and the molars well I catalog each samples that were presented to me well uh, some places they have their own unique way in cataloging but the most important thing in cataloging is that you need to record the site of where the samples or artifacts were found its dimension the length the weight the color probably anatomical structure that you can identify it, the taphonomy where the structure belongs to uh, which species does it belongs to and of course date well all these things are morphometric analysis that i won't be discussing in depth in this vlog because i will be discussing it in my next vlog so i hope that you could keep yourself up to date what I'm interested in is these bluish composite that appear on some of the samples I received, especially the dental samples. Um, the bluish hue become intense after I dried these samples. I laid them in an open area, let them dry and the bluish hue just appear. So I thought that I would do a micro-analysis to identify what are those. 
so I brought them to scanning electron microscope and further diagnosed the elements of that composite under energy dispersive X-ray. Both analyses were done in SEM Quanta VEG 650. After these two analyses were done, I carefully scrape off the bluish composite and place it in a special sample holder and I put them in the XRD, the X-ray diffraction Bruker D8 advanced machine to confirm those elements made up what composite. So I took premolar 2 and premolar 3 as the samples. Well, on the SEM, you can see the images like this, black and white. And I have labeled spectrum 1 for premolar 2 as a focal area. You can see there, there's some um, crystal-like structure. While in premolar 3, the spectrum 2, if you could look carefully, it looks rather granulated. While the spectrum 1 it looks flat, probably the surface of the tooth itself. Then, and the EDX, it shows that there are two elements were discovered in abundance. They are the oxide and the the theorem for premolar 2 and for premolar 3 as well. You can see there the oxide and theorem, they made the most of it for both spectrum, spectrum 1 and spectrum 2. And under XRD, it is confirmed that these two elements made up a composite that is called vivinite. You can see the formulation there. It is Fe3 ferrous phosphate hydroxide. So, what is vivinite? Well, vivinite is actually a hydrated iron phosphate named after a Welsh mineralogist. John Henry Vivian, somewhere in the 17th century, he discovered this mineral. <coughs> well, usually vivinite is found in the riverbed, a riverbank, the bog, or places where you can find a lot of animal bones or even human bones but in my case um, the bones were discovered at the riverbank so it sort of tallied with the different shoals well vivinite is actually colorless in an anaerobic condition a condition that is lacking of oxygen. It turns bluish to greenish hue when exposed to oxygen. Oxidation changes its color. Well, you can see the formulation there. Fe2 plus can be removed, can be substituted by manganese, magnesium, or calcium. Well, vivinite is actually has been used widely in jewelry industry they made pendants for necklaces for earrings and in painting industry for the pigments of variety of hues they use to make uh, color paste well, I hope that this sharing is beneficial and if you have further information or comments, please write your comments below and anything that we could discuss further, that would be lovely. Kindly share, like and subscribe. Thank you.